Hello, welcome to RTV viewers. Today, this will be a third lesson on teaching English to the sheep. I am Kancha Ilaya Shepherd doing this series of lectures. In the last two lectures, we have seen that how it is important to learn English in Indian village environment around the nature, around the agricultural production and within the village family and society environment. And in the second lecture, we saw how our ancestors domesticated animals and birds. Today, in the third lecture, we will see how our people have looked after animals and through looking after animals, they built a civilization, economy, village system and human social collectivity. Once our ancestors domesticated buffaloes, cows and bulls, birds, even dogs and many other uh, animal species and bird species, the number of animals which were living around human beings gradually increased. Each family began to have 10, 20, 30, 40 animals for their economic purpose. Some animals were giving meat, some animals were giving milk, some animals were tilling the land, some animals were useful for other purposes. But looking after animals is not an innocent or ignorant people's work. It requires skill, it requires understanding of animal behavior, it requires hard labor of the whole family from morning to evening. Take for example, in our villages, people take care of buffaloes, which give lot of milk in India. To take care of buffaloes, whole day, some human beings keep going along with them into green pastures or what they call meadows, wherever a green grass is available naturally growing from earth because of rainwater or other harvested water. Now, buffalo is a very, very difficult animal to be managed. You have to study each buffalo's psychology. You have to study it, its relationship to nature, whether buffalo tolerates sun or whether buffalo tolerates rain or whether uh, it is good to buffalo to make it sleep in the water when there is hot sun, you know, and how to feed it with what kind of uh, grass or with what kind of grain, with what kind of uh, water it needs to be fed so that it can become more and more productive animal. And similarly, cow and bulls. For example, bull management is a very, very difficult process because both bulls and he buffaloes were used for 
agricultural production for tilling the land and for other purposes like you know pulling the carts transporting the grain and uh, also milk and meat people don't know that for a long time in indian history like the history of chinese the history of europe uh, most people ate uh, you know buffalo bull even cow meat as a food that is very proteinous for human being not that human beings kill all animals for food just like that human beings are not uh, mercilessly violent towards domesticated animals those who talk about you know meat eaters as violent people are committing a great scientific mistake in terms of science take for example shepherds who grow sheep and who nurture them sheep and goat as a long term family profession and historically shepherd is known as a human being with a man or woman equivalent to god why because shepherds when they domesticated one animal two animals three animals they started growing the herd they started growing them in more numbers and when they grew more in numbers they will have to really look after what kind of diseases these animals are getting what kind of wool cutting these animals required what kind of male female uh, cohabitation that needs to be encouraged and how to graze them in forests in uh, you know meadows and so on and so forth now this shepherd does not kill all animals at one go for food or does not sell all animals for money uh for for all animals for money just like that what they do is they grow hundreds of animals and for food purposes of that community or village they either uh you know butcher one animal for their own purpose once in a while and they sell annually few animals male animals particularly for financial purposes but the animal crop keeps growing on they don't kill all animals for food purpose or they do not destroy the animal you know uh, young ones let us say the lamb or see for milking the cow or milking the buffalo or milking the goat milking the sheep they don't starve their children they allow their children to survive with mother's milk and some amount of milk they take and in order to see that the milk productivity increases in the mother they feed that what they call noctating mother with more protein food with more uh, you know other items that normal sheep or goat or buffaloes or cows are given now this needs a very scientific approach take for example another thing when animal delivers its young one animal suffers a lot animal delivery process is take, taken care by the animal uh, husbanding man or woman or the shepherd with a lot of scientific medical approach i personally knew how my father my brothers my relatives as shepherds used to carefully midwife 
a sheep or a goat when it is delivering they used to use their fingers very carefully to gradually uh, open up the vaginal tract of the animal and pull out the head of the lamb or the baby goat that was coming from the womb of mother and after the mother delivers they immediately feed the mother with green grass or some food they make it drink water and they take care of the animal like you know a woman who is taken care immediately after she delivers the baby so our shepherds our headsmen those who take them into forest those who work around them those who give them food and water those who clean them occasionally those who wash them those who cut the wool of you know animals like sheep they are not innocent they are not uh, ignorant people they may be illiterate but they are great human beings who survived our economy our system our villages our culture now it is from this they also imagined or constructed their own gods and goddesses take for example the shepherd communities they have number of sheep related gods and goddesses in the community stories and these gods and goddesses were not war heroes or not war heroines or those who were making love with each other like what they do in our cinemas cinemas these days but they were the ones who collectively wife and husband has grown the crop of the sheep have grown the other animal economy see there is a god called birappa there is a god called mallanna there is a goddess called a uh, pochamma in the village now these goddesses and gods are those who came from the animal economic evolution those who have done great things in their uh, animal economy or in their herding life or in their village life they were respected more and more and over a period of time they acquire the divine images so we have various kinds of gods in the country but the indian civilization has forgotten the gods and goddesses that have emerged from our animal economic activity our curing of the culture of curing of diseases take for example pochamma as a goddess pochamma became a goddess because she discovered the herbal medicines like neem like you know uh, your tulsi uh, uh, plant which was useful for certain things the plants are not meant for worshiping whereas plants were meant for using as medicines in order to cure both animal diseases as well as human diseases thus the divine figures emerged from animal herding communities even today among our tribal communities among our shepherds among our barbers among our washing communities there are several beliefs and divine practices that show us for example take the uh, washing communities among the washing communities there is a goddess called gangamma this goddess is known as water goddess that they have worshiped water for for the simple reason that water was being used for drinking for bathing and for washing animals 
all as a collective thing and also growing crops. Now thus the animal economy was the key in building our villages. Therefore in our schools a lesson has to be introduced around how animals are taken care, how animals are headed, how animals are shepherded and how the animal herders and the shepherds are greater human beings than those who do not involve in such economic activity. Now after this third lesson we will go to our fourth lesson about tilling the land. Thank you very much. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. RTV, RTV Telugu, RTV, RTV Telugu, RTV Telugu, RTV Telugu.